In this video we're going to perform a small signal analysis of an emitter coupled pair. Um, and we're going to use a few neat circuit tricks when we do that to greatly simplify the analysis. Those tricks are called half circuit analysis because they let, our cu because they let us cut our small signal models in half. I've drawn an emitter coupled pair on this slide in the associated small signal model. Um, and I've relaxed the input constraints uh, that we were using in the last video to allow both a small signal common mode sig a small signal common mode signal and a small signal differential mode signal that you see there. This means that we'll be able to analyze any arbitrary pair of small signals on top of a DC common mode. Um, but note that that means we're now relying on two assumptions about our signal. We assume we have a small signal deviation from a DC common mode. So we're combining small signal analysis and differential analysis at the same time. But notably, none of this depends on the frequency of the signals. The analysis we're about to do doesn't rely on us being in the midband. It works for any two small signals. Okay, so we could solve this small signal model. It's not much more complicated than a cascode, but it has some oddities. Um, if we were to think about this circuit in terms of single-ended signals, it's got two inputs, one on the left and one on the right. Um, and we don't have any analysis tools to deal with multiple input systems. Um, even if we use a differential representation, there's still two differential signals, right? We need to think about the common mode as an input and a differential mode as an input, which gets us back to the same problem. Fortunately, our small signal model is linear. That means we can break the uh, input signal up into VCM and VDM, um, analyze the effect of the circuit on those two signals separately, and then add the results together to find the output. The common mode analysis and the differential analysis will each have one input and one output. Um, breaking up the differential and common mode signals like this is called half-circuit analysis, and we'll see why in a minute. We're going to look at purely differential small signal inputs first, and that's going to result in us drawing something called the differential half-circuit. The big thing to notice when we draw differential half circuits is that no current will ever flow into our tail if we have purely differential inputs. Um, since our input's purely differential and every element is linear and matched on the left and right side of our circuit, um, any increase in current through R pi or GM over here will be exactly matched by a decrease in current through R pi and GM over here. So current will flow from this plus VDM over 2 across the circuit down into minus VDM over 2, uh, rather than down through our tail. Um, so that's why I've indicated our differential mode current flowing this way. Differential mode current flows across our structure, not down into our tail. If there's no smoke small signal current flowing in our tail, then the tail node never changes voltage. And if a node doesn't change in a small signal model, it's the same thing as it being grounded. Said another way, small signal models represent devi deviations from a large signal bias point, so nodes that don't deviate are small signal grounds. That means we can virtually insert this ground on the tail node. The tail node is virtually grounded. Um, and if we do that, then the analysis of this circuit becomes much easier, because the left side and the right side don't interact. Um, this virtual ground just captures the other side exactly, cancelling out what the side that you would analyze is doing. So we can just choose to analyze the left side of this structure, which is called a differential half-circuit. Our half-circuit looks like this. We've copied over all the element values, so gm turned into gm, r pi turned into r pi, and all of the node voltages. So this is vdm over 2, this is also vdm over 2. We know that the right si side of the circuit will do exactly the same thing as this model because it's identical. The only difference is that the input is negative instead of positive. Um, this half circuit is obviously a common emitter. It looks identical to circuits we've looked at earlier, so analyzing it should be pretty quick. The voltage gain for this half circuit uh, for the differential mode is given by 
the differential output voltage over the differential input voltage. Now unfortunately we don't have VODM or VDM in our circuit. Instead we have VODM over 2 and VDM over 2. Um, on the upside, these factors of 2 will cancel out, which means that if we calculate the gain from here to here, we still get the differential mode gain of this circuit. Um, and that differential mode gain, uh, because this is a common emitter, is just minus GM times RC parallel RO. The input impedance of the differential half circuit is a bit weirder. It's given by the differential mode input voltage divided by the differential mode current. However, um, the input voltage is split between the left and the right of the circuit. This side goes up by VDM over 2 and this side goes down by VDM over 2. But the differential current is shared because it flows from left to right. It comes into one half circuit and out the other. So that means IDM gets copied over here even though um, it's sort of associated with VDM over 2. Um, we know that the current that flows in our differential half circuit is given by VDM over 2 divided by R pi, which I've put down here uh, to represent IDM. Um, and that means that our differential mode input voltage is 2 times R pi. That's twice as big as we'd expect. Um, a normal common emitter just has R pi as its input resistance. Um, but that result comes from how we define differential voltages and currents, not this transistor behaving weird. Our out has a similar behavior, which means that we see an output resistance of about 2RC instead of just RC for a normal common emitter. The common mode half circuit has to be analyzed differently from the differential half circuit. I made some deliberately obtuse notation on this slide by calling the two output voltages. Um, by different names. However, we know that the input to either side is going to be the same because they're both VCM common mode is the same on both sides. And uh, we know our structure is perfectly symmetrical. So that means that these voltages have to be the same too. In fact, uh, every voltage on the left side of a differential structure has to be the same as the voltage on the right side of this differential structure. If those voltages are the same, then we can short the left and right output nodes together without changing anything about our analysis. The same is true for the two inputs, which also have the same voltage on them. Um, and if we had other nodes that had the same voltage on the left and the right, we could short those two. Once we've shorted all these nodes, then we can simplify our circuit quite a bit to find the common mode half circuit. Um, note that common mode current does flow into our tail. So uh, if I were to raise VCM on both sides here, even though the voltages are the same, we'd see current flowing down into our tail on both sides. Um, and so that uh, means that our tail appears in our common mode half circuit um, and uh, with ICM flowing into both sides of it. Um, so note that as we go from our full representation to our common mode half circuit, we've combined lots of shorted elements in parallel. So our input is R pi over 2 because these two VCM nodes are shorted on the top of two values of R pi, and the emitter is uh, shorted together on the bottom of R pi. Similarly, the two GM generators in general become, in parallel, become two GM and the two output resistances in parallel become R over 2. Um, R tail doesn't get a similar treatment because there's only one of it. Uh, there's no second R tail that it falls in parallel with. Um, this circuit's obviously a common emitter with degeneration, um, so we can find its amplifier parameters pretty easily. First, the common mode gain is given by V OCM over V CM. Uh, in a common emitter with degeneration, that's about the emitter resistance over the collector resistance, or the collector resistance over the emitter resistance, so we get um, RC over 2 R tail. Um, because R tail is a big current source output impedance, the common mode gain is usually quite small. Um, and note that this factor of 2 comes from the two RCs falling in parallel with each other. Um, 
not from any funny definitions of VCM or VOCM, because we have the full VOCM and the full VCM in this schematic, we don't run into the same problems that we had to account for in the differential half circuit. The common mode input resistance is given by the common mode input voltage or the common mode current. Um, and because this is a common meter with degeneration, we know that's given by the resistor in the R pi position, R pi over 2 in our case, plus beta plus 1 times the uh, resistor in the emitter position, R tail in this case. Note that this beta is 2 gm times r pi over 2, uh, but those two factors of 2 cancel out. Finally, the common mode output resistance is given by rc over 2 in parallel with r over 2, um, or excuse me, rc over 2 in parallel with the big impedance seen looking down into a degenerated common emitter. It's worth noting that the amplifier parameters of this resistively loaded amplifier are different for the common mode compared to the differential mode. Uh, this is true in general for any amplifier parameters. For instance, there are separate sets of differential and common mode open circuit time constants. Um, and I find that kind of magical. It's weird that this structure has different properties, uh, like different bandwidth for differential signals and common mode ones, but it's true. When we build differential amplifiers, we usually want them to be sensitive to differential signals and insensitive to common mode signals. Amplifiers have a few figures of merit that help us measure how well we've done in that goal. The first of these is the common mode rejection ratio, which is the ratio of the differential voltage to the uh, the differential mode voltage gain to the common mode voltage gain. It tells us how much the amplifier will reject common mode changes at its inputs. Um, and we want this to have a very high value so that differential signals get lots of gain and common mode signals get very little. Um, the second figure of merit is the power supply rejection ratio, uh, which measures how much the power supply can affect our output. When the power supply changes, it results in common mode changes at the output because the power supply is common to both branches of the amplifier. Uh, so we can define a gain from the power supply of the output, which we'll call AVCC, uh, and that's changes in the output common mode uh, with respect to changes in the power supply. Um, so by imagining that we have a small signal input test source on the supply, we could test that. Um, and I've drawn that situation on the right here. Excuse me, on the left here. Uh, we define the power supply rejection ratio as the differential mode gain divided by AVCC. You'll also see the power supply rejection ratio defined re relative to a single-ended output sometimes, but that just results in a 3 dB difference between the two measurements. Um, because the differential mode gain will be twice as big if you include both the plus ODM over 2 and the minus over 2. So in summary, you can generate differential half circuits by virtually grinding the sort of symmetrical center node of a circuit and analyzing one half. You can generate common mode half circuits by shorting non-tail nodes and then combining all of the elements in parallel. Um, common mode and differential mode amplifier parameters are different from one another. And the common mode rejection ratio is given by AVDM over AVCM.